So I'm not gonna lie, I have not seen many alpha investment videos before my binge. I've been binging his videos going down to zero. Many times I'll just use the video title and then kind of talk about what I wanna talk about or you know, based on the video title. It's very, lots of very good video titles he has and people obviously click on them. So I have watched his videos now. I watched the majority of the recent ones he posted maybe a month ago until now. I've been binge watching his videos and he seems to get more and more disheveled, depressed. You know, there's that video that's I think less than a minute of him just like showing the heavy bags. And that makes me like very cringe. I mean, I just like, wow, that like, no matter how much of a hoarder I am, and no matter how much a hoarder you are, it's nothing like the Card Fight Vanguard, the Weiss, the Modern Horizons, the Meta Zoo, who else knows what else stuff he has. And you know, in one video, he's talking about how Arabian Nights, they can never reprint it because there's a lot of cards that are offensive. But they reprinted Time Spiral, they reprinted Planar Chaos, and the other set, uh, Future Sight. Why can't they do that for, if they do decide, if they have reprinted, if you think the proxy is a reprint, no matter what you think it is, it is a reprint of the Black Lotus. Well, that was alpha, you know? So what is the argument that they can't print Arabian Nights because there were offensive cards in Arabian Nights? There were offensive cards in Alpha that they took out. So why wouldn't they use the same, oh, we're just not gonna reprint these certain cards like Earthbind and so on. Things are getting bad. I have, I had my buy list up for so many years and it's always been very competitive. I've always paid way more than anyone else in the marketplace because by definition, I pay you whatever the highest buy list is and then we go from there. Many times I will pay the shipping. Um, if the shipping is very expensive, I'll split the shipping with you. So these, th those are things that Card Kingdom and so on. And I'm very, very generous in my grading standards as well. I'm very, I'm relatively lenient. So if you sell me older cards, I will be very lenient with them. And you get cash if you want cash. Whatever payment you want, it is done that day, done that hour. I receive the product and inspect it. Yeah, um, I am not in so i feel many of the same things i think alpha investment is feeling but he, his feeling is probably more extreme because he has more money in it you don't make a video of all these boxes this wall so but i understand what that is i have booster boxes myself they're heavy they're you know like i mean he's got them how he let's say like for me Many times I have to move stuff from my home to storage, from my storage to my home and so on. You know, I'm trying to get more space. I'm trying to maximize the space. So like sometimes I would put something here temporarily and they'll have to move. Like it's crazy to me just how much stuff he has and it's stacked to the walls, which I don't stack even my bulk. I don't stack it deeper than six boxes on top of each other because I feel like, you know, the worst case would be like if somebody died in that basement and they, you know, just it's like a hoarder, right? And then something collapsed, the Weiss cards collapsed on him. This is actually like a danger because he has to stack up the ceilings and it's not even good a car fight vanguard. It's just how it, it's a little sad on Scott because like I'm a hoarder. And I know I have problems. I know I, my free car garage, two of these spaces is just magical. It's like filled, it's not to the ceiling, it's six cards. It's just Pokemon and Magic and Meta X and Inuyasha and Fire Emblem. Like I have a sheer, serious problem in that game right now because I bought so much that Amazon banned me from buying more. I've never seen that before where you can no longer buy no more product. I bought so much, my FedEx guy started stealing from me. Which is not a good sign. You know, I, I he's, he's a young guy. He's like uh, maybe 20. He knows what is in these packs. He, know, he knows, he knows. I'd be not surprised if like he then took the stuff that he stole from me and tried to. And I didn't get a rebate or anything because Amazon, like FedEx is a piece of shit. And Amazon, you know, again, it's just not worth my time to argue over that like $100. 
I did argue with them. I opened the case, nothing happened. I mean, nobody's going to refund. If they lose a package, their FedEx will blame Amazon. Amazon will blame FedEx. And then Amazon will say, oh, we can't do anything. Talk to FedEx. FedEx will say, oh, we can't do anything. Talk to Amazon. It's dumb as hell, you know, but that's where we are. So I, I spent a lot of time doing that to just figure out, you know, not, not even like just for me to like understand what it is. And it seems like you would have to spend days, if not weeks, to get any type of refund. Uh, even then, it might not be a full refund, even though that the FedEx guy stole it and you have evidence of that. So back to kind of where I am. Um, yeah, I mean, you watch Unhinged Magi, you watch anyone with a massive magic collection, and I trust me, they're not happy. You look at Alpha Investment's face, and it's like, you know, he's... When you have that much money in the reserve list, and like he said, Merrill has made promises, like, I don't think the reserve list is a legally binding contract. I think it's more of a promise, you know, more of a goodwill promise. Hey. We're going to trot Matt Mayer out there and he's going to say the reserve list is stronger than it's ever been before, right before they do the proxies. It's savage what they did. You know, every single announcement was reserve list is strong, reserve list is strong. And then they drop, Brian Kibler drops the announcement that, hey, reprint's coming. And that's the only, I mean, that's the Everyone who's played Magic, as long as I have played Magic, they understand what's going to happen. Because I've seen it happen with other card games. When a card game is about to die, they reprint all their most powerful cards. Fire Emblem did a special set on the 22nd set. Like, Because at that point, why are you concerned about power level? Why are you concerned about the equity or the value of people's collections if you... I mean, the game is just dead, going to die anyway. Like, this is something every gotcha game does as well. Right before it dies, it gives you, like, more stronger characters because, again, it's going to die soon. So you got to get these chase characters. They want to make money. It's like... It's a pattern of behavior. Wizard of the Coast has a pattern of behavior where they lie to you, they make money from you, then they lie to you again, and they charge you even more money. Wizard of the Coast is just rolling in money. I mean, imagine the collect the idea of the collector pack. They print three times the less car less cards, three times the shipping less shipping cost, and they charge three times as much money. <laughs> like the and then everything's a foil, everything's a chase. You know, I've been opening these booster packs like Karn, Living Light Legacy. You would think, oh, this is the guy on the front of the booster pack. This is the Chase card. It's not. Look, this is a pretty Chase Mythic. It's worth like two dollars, and there's like eight different versions of him. <laughs> there, nothing is valuable. Nothing is sacred in this game, and therefore everything will go to zero. And that's how you treat it. If you treat it as a player's game, well, good luck, because I, I don't know too many places. You, you want to go to GameStop? You go to Walmart, play some magic at Walmart. A long time ago, I made a D I, I, I made, you know, I said this. If you could set up a local game tournament of at least eight people at your at your Walmart in the public in a public space. So not like that you guys are Walmart employees playing during a lunch break in the back room, the break room. I'm talking about like in public space, I would send you a free booster box. Nobody has ever accepted that challenge because I think Walmart would kick you out. So it had to be a full length tournament and it had to be pictures and evidence and you know, it's just not like you got to prove that it happened. Walmart has a lot of space. You can play in like one of the dead aisles in the tire aisle after the tire shop closes, right? Or the gardening aisle. You can go to the gardening aisle, set it up, see if they let you do it. I'm actually curious if they do. But I don't want to go to jail, so I'm gonna, you know, for a booster box, I, I'm going to test that example out. Everyone has lost money due to the Joe Biden recession. But when I look at Alpha Investments, I look at the heavy bags videos, I look at him now promoting Pokemon, even though he doesn't understand how how rare these hits are. He's talking about like this hit. This hit is one in every 1,440 packs. 
And there's only another hit that in this set, Fusion Strike, which he talks about, there's only another card, Gengar, uh, the alt art Gengar that's over 100 too. And that again is one in every like 1400 packs. So one in every 700 packs will have an Espeon or a Gengar. And that's the card he's talking about like skyrocketing in price, but you will have to open 700 packs to get one. Uh, now you can also get a Mew, uh, but even like if you crack an Arceus V, which is a beautiful card by the way, it's only 50 bucks. I thought this was like a $200 card. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous, but it's not. And then these are like less than a hundred. I mean, I don't know if Pokemon's the right move to make, but you know it's desperate when the guy who's putting the Pokemon in the bathroom, the famous bathroom of Pokemon dead products, right? That he thinks died even though Generations is a really good product to have, in my opinion. Not Evolutions, but hey, not bad. Uh, he's the one now telling you to buy Pokemon boxes for retail. You know things have gone really bad when, when you can, you know, he's not telling you to buy $50, $60. Now, I don't understand, like, like, I don't know. Do you guys shop every day? Every day you go buy a booster box or whatever the current market price is, or do you just wait for a sale? Like, I wait for a sale. You know when the sale is coming because it's being promoted by Wizards of the Coast on their Twitter. And then you go on Amazon, you click the link from the Twitter post and it takes you to Amazon page and you click on the sales items. I don't know who the F is buying these booster boxes every single day at the market price. Who's buying Crimson Valve for like a hundred dollars? Like you wait for the sale. Pokemon does not have sales. During Prime Day, no Pokemon sale. I checked because I wanted to buy Pokemon cards. I, if the Pokemon cards are $60 a box like Magic, I would buy all the Pokemon cards because that's way cheaper than a distributor. But look how beautiful this card is. 50 bucks, huh? Hmm, should be more, I don't know. These are my top five cards. I don't know why I have Hunch Crow here. I think that was just a mistake. These are top five cards that I will give away on live stream once I figure out, once I have a little bit more time. Live streaming is very, very time intensive. Anyway, bye guys.